Hey guys, welcome back to Blind Strike Exotics. Today, as you can see behind my shoulder here, I have the tiny wall of Blind Strike Exotics of shipping boxes. So there's a little bit of downtime today. So I kind of wanted to go over you guys that aren't really aware of it, like on, on the consumer side or even the new breeders, kind of what goes into shipping snakes and what the costs are. Um, typically, Shipping is expensive with overnight. Somebody last night asked about a hatchling, which is the smallest ball python you're going to ship. And when it's not cold weather, I ship them in these 7x7x7 seven by seven by seven boxes. To ship this box to this person asking for a shipping quote in Colorado from Pittsburgh, it was $70. That's for a hatchling because it's going from coast to coast. Anytime I'm shipping, unfortunately, because I'm only on the East Coast, Shipping out west, it is very expensive. And on top of that, there's obviously an added cost because to me, I call it shipping and handling. This material costs me money. I just actually placed a $300 order for boxes and snake bags so that I'm ready for when all of my hatchlings are ready to go because these are the last eight hatchling boxes I have. So I had to order 60 more boxes and I ordered that's fine. The boxes come in 20 and the bags come in 25. So we're in 75 bags in 60 boxes. So that should get me through most of the season. But those boxes end up breaking down. The, the boxes and the bags combined end up costing around $5 for the tiny ones and the tiny bags. The prices go up from there. So when somebody wants a shipping quote from me, I usually tack on five, six bucks to cover the cost of materials to ship to. That's why it's called shipping and handling. Um, it also costs time, but I don't really factor that in there because maybe it takes a minute or two to build one of these boxes, which is what I can show you here real quick too. So this is a box. They come flat. Um, they actually came in this big box right here. Everything comes shipped flat in there. There's some leftover styrofoam. I don't know if I'm missing a box or what because there's exactly enough pieces for one more box. So I don't know where that went. So everything comes shipped flat. So you need to, you know, form this box, put a piece of tape over the bottom of it. And there's two different sizes of styrofoam. There's the top and bottom pieces and the side pieces. So we have the one bottom piece in there already. And then what you do is take these side pieces and line them up on the sides just like so. Kind of like a little puzzle. Then typically what I do is I have all this unprinted newspaper that I use to line some of the, some of the tubs for the snakes. And I use that as kind of a filler. And you crumble it up, put some in the bottom. You put the snake in the snake bag after you make a nice little nest on top of that. And then you put some more paper on top and then the last piece of styrofoam goes on top of here like so. And then you fold it shut and, 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 and tape it. If you're in warmer weather or colder weather, let's say you're shipping in the winter, um, I use Ship Your Reptiles, and they say not to ship hatchlings or anything uh, in a box smaller than 12 by 9 by 6 if you're using a heat pack because it can kill the animal. So if you have to use a heat pack, what you do is you take the top piece of styrofoam and you tape it to the top of here so it cannot fall down onto the snake and then you flip it over and put the the heat pack downward into the box so that it's kind of suspended in midair but that's kind of the gist of of what's going on i had some extra time today so i just decided to build these eight boxes to get them out of the way because the the new set will be coming in hopefully next week and I'll need somewhere to store them. So, and hopefully these boxes will be actually be headed out with, with babies in the next couple of weeks. But I just wanted to show you real quick kind of what goes into the shipping process. You know, building boxes doesn't take long, but it can be expensive. Each one of these boxes plus a snake bag is about $5. And the prices go up as you get bigger boxes and bigger snake bags. There was, I had to ship some females out that were really big this year 
in like 18 by 18 by nine boxes, which are huge. And shipping costs on those are well over $100. So if somebody's quoting you $100 and you're getting a big female, don't be surprised. I haven't really shipped any big females unless it's really close for under $100. And that's that. I don't make any money off of shipping. I don't know if anybody that does, usually when I get shipping quotes from people, they're accurate as to what shipping should cost. So, and that's, like I said at the beginning of the video, shipping a hatchling in one of these small boxes, which is just about the tiniest box you're gonna ship any, any hatchling ball pythons in, from Pittsburgh to Colorado was $70. That's crazy, but that's what the cost is. And that's not retail, that's like the ship your reptiles price. So it's even a little cheaper than what it would cost if you went straight through FedEx. So when you get quotes on shipping snakes, don't be surprised if, you know, your $200 snake ends up costing $300. And on top of that, like I said, I usually tack on the extra $5 for the materials because I can't keep spending, you know, $300 every month, every two months on, on shipping materials and you know, losing that out of pocket. So that usually gets kind of put into my costs when I'm shipping things out. After all, this is a business, I'm not in it to lose money, I'm in it to make money. So the, uh, you know, that's the packing material, shipping and handling is all combined together. But that's how shipping works. That's what you need to look forward to if you're just getting into this and you haven't shipped anything yet. And if you're just a consumer and you're just buying snakes, this kind of gives you a behind the scenes look into what the costs are to actually ship things, what the materials cost, and what it takes to actually put these boxes together, how we do it, how the assembly line works, and the la actually the last part I didn't mention is, especially usually when it's warmer, not always when it's cold, is you usually poke a hole in one or two sides or three sides or four sides of the boxes for, for ventilation. Don't poke the hole while the snake's in the box. You want to poke it beforehand just to help get some air circulation in there too. Um, for those of you that will be shipping in the future. Other than that, I mean, it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy. So quick video on shipping since I was making this, you know, little wall of blind strike here. And uh, that's it for today. Thank you guys for stopping by.